Hi there everyone, I'm Nam Pham and in this video I will be showing you a full build of the Micro Apex 3 inch frame. So here it is, it's already built um, and I will take you through how I've uh, put it all together uh, from uh, everything from the frame all in parts uh, and the flight controller, ESC, video transmitter and the radio installed uh, and a few things as well along the way that I've had to work around to get this to to work um, so what I've got in here and I'll go through some of the parts I do have these motors here I'll start from the outside these are the Zing uh, 1404 uh, motors they are 4600 kV so they are high kV um, and I've chosen them because they are lightweight um, I have no real um, need to have it lightweight but I did want to have a light uh, quadcopter to fly around um, just so that it's a little bit more quiet um, to fly around that they, they <laughs> I found out that they do make quite a bit of noise still but it is still something that um, yeah you can fly around a small park and not have to worry about um, other people uh, there and not scaring them so yeah um, yeah those are the motors um, the propellers here are the uh, gem fan 3028 I believe um, yep and they are the wind dancers um, they are low pitch but they do fly with a nice cruisy characteristic so it's pretty good um, I do like them I do have the uh, gem fan uh, flash 3052s as well which I do have here um, these are much more aggressive better for the acro uh, doing a lot of the uh, flips rolls and things like that uh, sharp turns so they are quite fun as well um, what I have in here for the um, the stack for the flight controller is the it's I think it's a clone or it might be, even be the the Fury B um, mini fly tower stack so it does come with the ESC the flight controller which is an F4 controller uh, and also a, a video transmitter as well I think it goes up to 400 um, milliwatts so it's actually um, not too powerful, but I'm not flying this thing too far away from me. It is analog um, So yeah, uh, it does all right in a small space um, So yeah, I had to wire all that up. I will show you that through the video The camera here is a run cam. I think it's a nano 2 I like to say I might have to check that later. You might see it here in the um, video might pop up um, so the reason why I do have this camera here is because I've taken it from a tiny hawk 2 which has uh, blown ESC's on it so I can't be bothered to replace um, the flight controller in that thing it's a bit too expensive for the cost of the actual quad itself so I thought I'd just harvest some of the parts out and the camera is good to use in here I do have under here as well you'll see that is the uh, Radio Master R81 receiver um, I use it because it's reliable cheap and small easy to work with um, so yeah that's what I've got uh, on the back here I do have the video transmitter antenna it is the Foxeer lollipop 3 um, I've recently seen that there's the lollipop 4 out as well although I don't think that there is any ad much advancements to antennas greatly that I've ever heard of recently that uh, warrants any upgrade from a 3 to a 4 um, but I haven't seen many any reviews yet I'd like to see them so maybe there is and I might swap that out but um, it's quite easy having them as an SMA connector here so um, yeah so I think those are all the components and this is what I've built I'll go through them these are if you're interested these are um, custom actually I've uh, designed this mount here and this is for the Cadex Orca um, FPV uh, kind of HD recording or 4K recording so that sticks on top there I do strap it down with the uh, battery strap as well um, so that is handy to have on um, and all of these blue accessories so these are the um, standard accessories that come with the frame these are the Coyote Brown um, Mr. Steel style accessories I do have them all as well they don't have the back they have the um, motor guards and also the front lip but I've replaced these since I've um, started 3d printing with this this blue color here this silk blue so it, it looks nice with the theme of all this blue here um, I wanted a blue quadcopter um, so 
yeah, everything in here, it looks good, it flies well. You'll see some, um, I'll post up some demo flight videos as well. Uh, and also the configuration video of how I've set up the uh, beta flight um, software and what settings I've put on there to uh, get it to fly properly. So there you go. Um, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, I hope you learned something and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so here we have the Apex Micro 3 inch frame. So here is uh, here are the four arms and uh, here is the keystone which is quite important. Um, this keeps the arms locked in. This is the top frame. Uh, this is the middle frame, uh, part of the bottom frame that actually holds in the flight stack and uh, the video transmitter at the back. This is the bottom frame and what also comes in here is a Velcro sticky battery um, kind of holder thing so this is some velcro on it stiff velcro and this is a rubber uh, pretty nice sticky um, battery uh, pad as well so um, I'll put them on at the end for now I'll get them out of the way um, the I didn't realize that um, the pack the frame actually comes with the black accessories for the bottom of the motors and also the front uh, lip of the frame as well. Um, so when I ordered it, I also ordered the uh, the Coyote Brown um, Mr. Steel style um, accessories as well. So I, um, yeah, I don't know which one I'll be using, but at least I do have two sets that I can choose from. All right, so uh, we'll get straight into it. So the first thing that we'll need to do is actually get on, on these press nuts. So you can see here are the press nuts and uh, they go into the frame on this side of the bottom frame. So you can see here there's a countersunk holes for the screws that are the stack screws and the press nuts actually have to go in on top in these four corners here. So they'll be going here, pull them out. Here and here. So I'll get one in on the first one on this side and what they've provided in the pack and here is all the accessories that all the little hardware pieces that come with it that do give they do give this here this uh, set here where I can actually put this through and what this allows me to do is to pull through the press nut so setting it in like this I'll just screw in the press nut and get it into place first and what I'm gonna have to do is using a hex driver of the right size tighten it down and what happens is it starts to pull that through And I'll do the rest now for the other three. Now that the press nuts are in, we don't need this anymore. Put that back, put that away. So the press nuts are in, and the next thing that we'll need to do is get the stack screws in. And the reason for that is because we can't actually get the um, the stacks get to the stack screws once we put it all together with the arms. So I'll do that now. Uh, and the flight controller I'm using um, requires the M2 hardware so this is an m2 stack screw that comes with the apex micro uh, three inch pack um, and so what they've given is this with the countersunk m2 stack screw now 
when you put in a stack screw that's M2 into this hole here, it kind of is, it, it kind of gets a little bit loose, as you can see here. And um, it doesn't really make me feel comfortable having this sitting in there. Um, so what the, it, the frame comes with are these little O-rings. So I don't know if you can see that there. It's a tiny little O-ring. And what we can do is fit them on. I don't know if this is actually the intended purpose for these O-rings, but I'm going to use them anyway because I find that it actually does sit in there quite well. So we put that in. And I've got these other three prepared already with the O-rings. Put them in. And I'll turn it over. And I will be using these M2 nylon nuts. And I'll put them in. Alright, now that we have the stack screws in for the flight controller and ESC, you can see that there. Um, so the next part is we'll put in these little rubber standoffs um, that kind of is the, the separator. Um, so it gets the ESC away from the frame and also separates the flight controller as well. But what I'll do is I'll cut these in half because I think these nylon nuts have already given a little bit of distance, so I only need half the length of this. So I'm gonna cut that with a blade. Alright, I only need four of them, so I only have to cut two to make four, and I'll just slide it on here. Turn it to the side, so maybe you can see it a little bit better. Get that in there. Alright, so now that I do have that on there properly now, um, I can put on the, I'll put on these um, screws on first so I can get the frame together and then I'll put the ESC on. So I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, but that's okay, it should be all right. So I'm just putting these lock nuts on top for now. So I can work on the rest. Okay, so now we will get on the onto the arms so this is the bottom frame here and the arms will have to go in like this i'll get the top frame out top plate out of the way so the arms will actually go not like that it goes this way and this way here sorry not like that either this way here now, you'll notice that there is a side to the uh, arms and the holes in the middle there need to be sticking up. Um, so once that you get that right, the keystone actually sits in like this, right in the middle. So uh, once we know that, it's a bit hard actually, so I might start putting some screws in first. Get this out of the way. Um, and the screws do come with these, the plate screws do come with these here, so that it gives it, it spreads some of that, um, it distributes some of that, that force uh, around the plate, so it doesn't cause the uh, frame to crack so easily, so I do like that. So I'll do this, I'll put this on.
and this last one get it underneath and the arms can go in so there you go put that on top get that this little keystone piece in the middle right it's not playing well let's try that again So it is a little bit hard to get in. I guess that's the point so that it actually wedges together so that it forces it all together nice and tight. So there you go. Once that's on, I'll get this top frame on top, or actually part of the bottom frame onto it like this. And I'll hand tighten the screws first just to get them in and they'll go into the press nuts. So what I like to do is actually, I like to keep it, once it's lightly in place, I like to put it in there and give it a little bit of a wiggle first. It lets everything settle in nicely between each of the parts and not be forced together so much. And then once everything is kind of settled in, I start to tighten them. And I also do like to alternate them as well. All right, so at this stage, I tighten it a bit tight with the hand, but not too much. And I'll tighten it at the end with a bit more force to keep everything um, before flying. So there you go. The bottom frame is put together with the arms. And uh, I believe this is the front and this is the back here. So just for you to see how it looks like with the top frame on, um, it will be looking like this once we have the stack screws in. That's how it should look. Turn it to the side a little bit. There you go. All right, so now that we have the frame, bottom frame together, I will get onto the ESC as I was before. And as I mentioned, you can't get to the stack screws. All these pieces just fell out, which I shouldn't have done. But you can see that the stack screws are not accessible once you do have the frame together on the bottom. Which is a bit of a shame, but that's how they designed it. All right, so uh, what I can do now is the ESC. So I can put the ESC on. Here it is. It's quite nice. And the way that this has to go in is we'll look at the motor numbers. So it might be a bit hard to see, but on here we do have motor 1, motor 2, motor 3 and motor 4 and I'll be running Betaflight on this thing so it will be going in this direction here so you got motor 1, 2, 3 and 4 okay all right so now that's in um, what I would like to do is I'll put in the I'll use these ones because they can go down to the bottom. Okay, so I'll put this on. What's this gonna? Do? What I'm doing here is just putting on some screws so I can hold down the ESC while I work on soldering it on. All right, so that's just gonna hold it there for now, which is nice and snug. Um, the next thing I will do is put on the motors. So these are the Zing. 1404 4600 kV motors these are the Zing 2s and they look really nice I do like the color um, so yeah um, I don't know if this is the great uh, decision to get these motors for this frame but I thought I'd give it a go I've seen a few other people online do it as well so um, we'll see how they perform so let's put them on
All right, so you'll notice that I only put on two screws for each of the motors. Um, that's only for temporary for this video. I will be putting the rest in, all four of them. Um, so yeah, there you go. So here are the motors are on with the ESC. So it's starting to look pretty good now. And all these motor wires are in the way. So let's move them out of the way. So I guess the next step is to solder these motors on um, so I've just fired up the soldering iron Let's see if we can get these out of the way so we can get working on it all right so while that's heating up and I'm preparing um, the motor wires that go on to actually it's this way around for motor one not that it matters um, but it doesn't matter which one of these three wires goes onto each of these three uh, these points here on the ESC. Uh, they can go in any order and we can change the direction of it in um, the uh, yeah. Heli M configurator um, software um, so that we can yeah, switch the direction of the motors there. So, all right. I'm gonna run the motor wires like this just around that press nut post and up like this for the first one and the other ones underneath it as well. So um, we'll get out some side cutters and start trimming away. All right, so I think I'll need that there. I think what I'll do is I should just tin everything as well. So let's give that a full tin over first. Right, so now that we have those tinned, I can get on to this next one here. So
All right, so now that we have the uh, ES, uh, ESC all soldered up with the boaters, um, as you can see here, I've checked it off camera and it looks pretty good. Um, so the next thing I would like to do is get the capacitor in. So this capacitor is um, going to try and filter out uh, some of the noise for the uh, video transmitter signal so that um, everything looks clean. Um, so I am planning to solder this on here like this and mounted here just on the frame so that we can actually put a cable tie on that. So I'll line this up and this ESC actually does have the holes for the legs but I think uh, they might fit. Alright, I think they might fit so I'm just going to try and guess how far they are and bend them down. And see if I can actually get this in. I might have to cut the positive one a bit shorter. And let's see if it fits this way. So just when you are putting this in, make sure that the minus sign is on the minus terminal of the ESC. So let's try this. It is a bit of a tight fit into these holes, but I think it'll get in there. All right, so it does get in there, which is good. And I won't solder it just yet. I'm just having a look at underneath it to see how long the legs are so I can trim them off so we don't have too much hanging out the bottom. We don't want anything to short underneath there, so we only need a bit of it to go into the ESC, so I'll just trim off a bit at the top. Yep. Another thing I'd like to do also is a bit of heat shrink on the legs. Just grab some now. Slip them on and keeps things nice and safe. So let's get the legs back on, get it down, and I can solder that on. Might be a bit hard later to solder on the uh, the uh, power lead or the battery lead, uh, but we'll try our best. Uh, I think that should be okay. So let's try to solder this down. All right. So now the capacitor is in, I'm going to get the battery lead on as well. I'm going to get the battery lead to come out the side of this quad, so I'll come out this way. I'm going to estimate that I'll need about that much length just to come around the top plate and uh, give it enough flexibility to maneuver around the battery lead as well uh, once we get the battery plugged in. So I'm going to guess that the black wire, the negative ground, I'll need about, hopefully, hopefully you can see that, I'll try it again this way, so you can see the negative is going to come up to here, and the positive will come up to about here, so I'll just try that right there. 
Okay, so just gonna trim off some of the silicon. In these guys. Right. Now that we have them tinned, we can get back in here. And I'll get the black one on first. Ground. That's on this side here. So let's get that on. All right. And this one on top. getting a bit hot so I might have to use these tweezers I have enough solder on there so I'm just going to add a bit more connection and that's just going to come around the frame like this all right so what I can do next is get the uh, flight controller to come on top so I'll just take these nylon standoffs off And I will be using the rubber grommets to go on top there between the ESE and the flight controller. So I'll just get them in. And here's the, well, no, it's not the flight controller. That's the video transmitter. So here's the flight controller. This is a Fury B um, Fly Tower Mini F4. Um, I know there's an F3 version as well. So I believe that the way this goes in, the direction is, the plug for this is on this side with the ESC. So it goes in this way here. Okay. Um, before I do that though, I will check that the plug that comes with it, that connects the flight controller and the ESC together, um, actually is, uh, the right way around so I always like to check that we do have the right plug in the right way um, and it will have to go this way so you can see here that there's the black wire that goes to the ground uh, and also um, yeah the motors one two and three and four are the ones that are the different colors so this will go actually I do have it the wrong way around actually see so I needed to check that um, you can see that they do have different sizes for each of these ends and the ESC side is the longer side so 
just checking that again that the ground is on this side so just plugging that in this way all right and so once that is in get this twisted and I'll plug it into the flight controller actually before I even do that I just realized that I'm missing one thing this uh, Fury B fly tower mini doesn't actually have the ground and the um, power going to the flight controller from the ESC now I don't know why they designed it that way um, but on this flight controller you'll see here that it does have B minus and B plus pads and those are for the battery so you can solder the battery directly to it I think in the past some other versions actually have them already soldered in for you to the ESC uh, but this one, the one I have, um, does not so I might have to just put that in for now and I'll have to re-solder it so that the battery that, that we do have power lines going from the battery lead directly to the flight controller here so I will be using another set of wires. I'll just give it over here. So I do have some wire over here. So I'll wire it up to the flight controller first and then I'll get it onto the the power li power lines for the um, battery so I'm just going to estimate quite a long piece run this underneath the flight controller so I'll be soldering it on this way flux onto these pads here just makes it easier to solder all right so there we have the power leads on the flight controller and this will come around like this all right so I might just keep it this way for now and trim off some of that wire and we'll have to re-solder this onto those pads there. I might tack them on. In fact, I might move this out a bit. same with the negative terminal we'll just move it out a bit since it's too close to the flight controller
might add a bit more solder to this negative terminal. While I'm at it, I'll have to trim some of this off. Expose the wire so I can solder them on. Do the positive first. So that's on. And then I'll do the negative as well. So now that they're on, hopefully this works the way that I've got it. I can fold it underneath and it sits nicely underneath it. So I think that's an okay job. Did okay. And it doesn't get in the way or isn't touching anything else. All right. So to get the flight controller in, Let's plug this in as well. So getting the ESC connected to the flight controller. Um, and I noticed that there's no way of actually telling which or what which side is ground for the flight controller plug, but this only goes in one way. So hopefully it is the correct way. It goes in like that. All right. Now we can secure the flight controller down. So I'll put these rubber o-rings on it and that's going to give it some of that vibration absorption and lastly the, the nylon sorry the um, lock nuts on top All right, so there you go. The stack is now on. Hopefully that's nice and neat. Power lead comes out the side here of the stack. Like that. Uh, and now I think what I will do is I'll test out what has been done so far. I like to test things out as we go along um, when we're able to test it. So now that the battery leads on, I do have a V-Fly Short Saver uh, 2, which is a smoke stopper. And this uh, catches anything that I've done wrong. If I soldered anything incorrectly, in the wrong way, any shorts um, that may have occurred or is, if anything's touching. So it's a good way to, a cheap way to test things and make sure that things don't fry on first go. So plug in a battery and it goes, it's in a standby mode at the moment plugging it into the the stack get it out of the way and hopefully when we press this button here which activates it which allows for the power to get through to the quad that everything's all okay so let's give it a go I'm just going to double check everything again yep and let's go three two one All right, so looks like everything's in order. Um, the ESC is fired up and the uh, flight controller booted as well, as you heard, so everything's all good. All right. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna be in installing is the video transmitter. So I'll just get the quad out of the way for now and get the uh, video transmitter 
into view. So this is a video transmitter that came with the flight stack um, when I bought it. So it comes with a Fury B um, stack and you can see that obviously there are no plugs for it but it does have the pads on this side um, that will be soldering up and it doesn't come pre-soldered so I'll start getting onto that. So I'll tin these first and I will be using these wires here that came with it so that I can wire it up to the flight controller. So I'll get to that now. I'll start teaming them up. I'll use a bit of blue tack just to hold it down. Get some flux onto the pads. So you'll see here, I might turn it around just to show you first, that we do have the data, which is for smart audio. Um, we do have the uh, video, um, that's uh, the video in, the five volt, and also um, ground. Also the power that comes into here is the uh, uh, seven to 26 volts here that it takes in. So we won't be using um, this five volt, that's usually for the camera that goes out, um, but we will be using the video in, data, ground, and also this uh, input power as well. So I'll get tinning on those. Alright, so the pads are now tinned and I'll get onto the wires as well. So straighten these up. I think <clears throat> I won't need to tin these, I think they're already pre-tinned. So I'll just wire them up. So of course um, red will be the power, black will be ground, yellow is usually the signal, so I'll leave that for the video signal, and the white I'll use for smart audio. So I'll wire that up to data. Might need a bit more flux on that. Just to make the uh, solder joints a little bit cleaner. There you go. The video. Yellow for signal. Okay. We'll do the ground next. There we go. <clears throat> And then also the power. All right, so I'm just gonna visually inspect that closely. I think I'll do the uh, the power one again. Alright, that's better. Alright, so now that we have this wired up, we can uh, give this a little bit of a twist just to keep the wires together, nice and neat. <clears throat> and then we can get it onto the frame. Alright, so there we are. That's ready to come on to the frame. So we'll get the frame into view. So the video transmitter, 
I will be mounting it on the back on top of the uh, capacitor here so I've kind of had a look at this and the best way to mount this I think into this frame with the uh, MMCX to SMA connector which is this one here um, the way that it loops within there and how rigid this is I don't like to damage these uh, solder connections inside them so one of the ways that I'll, I'll have to loop it in is going in this way so you'll see that in a second but for now I'll get the video transmitter in like this so you're probably wondering how am I going to mount that um, I do have stack screws and spacers that I'll be using so I'll do that now or just to show you here are the stack screws with a countersunk or angled head I'll pick that up so you can see that there and that goes into the countersunk holes underneath the frame at the back so you can see them here so these are two M2 mounting holes not M3 there you go and what I will be putting on them is these uh, nylon spacers so I'll just put them on Alright, so now that these stack screws are on with the nylon standoffs, you notice that um, it won't be tall enough, these standoffs, for the video transmitter to go on top of the capacitor. So you'll see here, that'll hit the capacitor and it won't be a solid um, mounting. So I will be using these here. These are TPU printed uh, standoff spaces and I got this from a uh, a store here an FPV store here called phaser FPV they're pretty good I found these and I find that they're pretty handy and also it's a nice TPU flexible print they're handy standoffs to use so put them in there and just to give it a bit of cushioning and uh, separation between the capacitor and the video transmitter I will be putting on some double-sided tape if I can find it yep I've got it here so here I'll be using some of this I'll need just a small bit of it so I'll get something to cut it So I only probably need just the length of the capacitor. All right. This also, I hope, will prevent some of that vibration as well getting to the uh, flight controller. So it's just going to sit on top of that. Right there and then the video transmitter can go on top so it'll go in like this with the wires coming out this way that would be good and it's already stuck to the capacitor which is fine and I'll use some more of these um, TPU printed standoff or uh, it's kind of like the um, spacer but it's about a one millimeter spacer which kind of like is a bit of a washer so I'll put that on top and then I'll get on the nut, the lock nut on top like that
all right so the video transmitter is fairly secure in there now and the capacitor is just underneath there all right so the next thing is to wire it up to the flight controller stack of course and this flight controller unfortunately on the top it doesn't have any of the labels but um, I've got the diagram here and on the back of the flight controller we do have the labels um, so we can go through that and also on the ad, um, ad on AliExpress and Banggood as well they do have the um, labels for each of the the pins or the pads um, for what they are and uh, here they are on the screen so you'll see that we've already uh, wired up the battery in the top here um, but also um, you'll look down the bottom you'll see that there's a video in video out the 5 volt and also the ground um, so that being on the back I will be wiring up the ground uh, video in and also the 5 volt to the video transmitter the smart audio uh, will go over to the TX1 pad so TX1 will be the uh, the UART and it seems as though this only really has one UART to be used um, from this flight controller but um, I'll be reserving that TX1 pad for the um, smart audio to control the video transmitter uh, power channel uh, and so forth so um, that's what I'll be using um, also um, I may as well explain here that there's also S bus right here and so it's on the outside third one down and it's S bus so I'll be connecting the uh, radio master R81 receiver to that and then also using the 5 volt for it and also the ground um, what else is there there's also the camera as well that I'll be wiring up to this so obviously um, actually I, I explained that wrong before I said video in for the video transmitter no it's the video out for the video transmitter uh, down the bottom there and the video in is the camera sorry about that so yeah the camera will be wired up with a signal from the camera into the video in of the flight controller and the power I'll be using on the right hand side there uh, with the 5 volt and the ground so um, that's how I'll be wiring it up and we'll get to that now so I think uh, as mentioned hopefully I don't get it wrong when I solder it up um, I'll be wiring up the video transmitter now to these pads so you'll see it here I'll be wiring these ones up to here uh, and also for TX1 it is the second one down on the inside which will be let's see if I point it to this one here okay so I'll be using these ones here for the video and uh, the TX1 over here so I'll get on with the the ground first because hopefully we don't get that one wrong and it's a really short wire so I'm just going to I'm going to give it a bit of slack so I will cut it off at about I won't cut all of them I gotta remember that this white one is smart audio which needs to be a bit longer so I'll just take that one out and giving this one a bit of slack so I can have some room to maneuver it around the board I'll snip these three here I'll move the the white one out of the way for now put it there and I'll get working on these ones so I'm going to tin these pads first alright I'm just going to visually inspect that Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can see it in there. You can see the rest of it there as well, the flight controller and the video transmitter. All right, so now that those are tinned, I'll strip these wires and get them ready. So I will wire the ground one up, as I mentioned earlier. I'll use my reverse action tweezers all 
and I'll wire it up to the ground there. Might be a bit hard to get around this. All right, let's try it this way. Actually, I forgot to tin these, these wires. Might do that now. So the next one is a five volt. Wire it up this way here. Actually, before I do that, I'll add on extra flux just to make the joints all nice and shiny. So that is the 5 volt and I'm just checking the diagram again and it is the 5 volt and here is where I went wrong earlier I should be wiring up the video out to the video transmitter instead not the video in so the next one is the video out right next to the 5 volt and it's going into the video transmitter so let's see if we can get it in there And there we go. All right. So just tuck these in here. Shouldn't be a problem there. Okay, cool. All right. So now that we have the video transmitter in and wired up, uh, we do need the smart audio connected as well. So I will route this try to avoid going over the flight controller one of the things i learned from joshua bardwell is to avoid having the wires going over the flight controller um, just in case some of the wires touch the gyro and it causes poor flight performance so i will try and get it through uh, i might as well just go over maybe this way it's over the processor, but it's not too bad. So I'll go over it this way. And I will need to tin the pad as well. So let's get some flux on there. I'll get it on all of them for now. I think that was a bit too much, but should be okay. Alright, so the TX1 is the one, the one on the inside of the board, second one down. That's a TX1. So this one here. Fill that up with a bit of solder. Try not to fill up too much of that because it is flowing through and underneath the board as well. All right, so I will be using S bus, so I'll be tinning that one as well. And that's the th on the outside, third one down. Okay. Uh, I think that balled up a bit too much. Oh, yep, there you go. And the two 5 volts and the two grounds I'll be using, so I'll tin them as well. So those are the, the 5 volts and the grounds are next. So these are the 5 volts here. That one there. Second one and the ground on this side. All right, the two bottom ones there is for the buzzer. I don't have a buzzer at the moment. I'm thinking of buying one and installing it later. It just helps me find the quad if I do crash it into 
um, some bushes and stuff. It just makes it easier to find. All right, so we do have that all tinned up and I will now wire up the video transmitter, smart audio. All right, so it's this one here. All right, there we go. And now that's wired up. So as mentioned before, I like to test as I go along every component that I install where I can. So we we'll use the uh, this uh, short saver again, the VFly short saver. And uh, it's a little bit extra effort, but always better to be safe than sorry. So when I plug this in now, actually, one thing that I did forget, almost forgot, was to put in an antenna. Uh, we don't want to power up a video transmitter without an antenna. It will overheat. And since this one doesn't have any heat sinks, I don't want to fry it. So plug that in, make sure it's all secure. And I'll connect it. It is still in standby mode, the short saver. So once I power it up, it will send electricity through to all of the components. So let's see if this smokes. Hopefully not. Three, two, one. All right, there you go. Video transmitter is going and you can see the light there flashing so I can tell that power is getting to it. All right. So I'll take the smoke stopper off and unplug it. So that's good so far. We have the video transmitter in and it's all working. So I'll take this out for now. Um, hopefully I don't forget later when I install the next component, which is um, the, I will be installing the receiver. So I need to find my receiver. Oh, actually it is right here. Okay. We don't need this anymore. All right. So here is the receiver. It is the uh, radio master R81. Um, I did use it in a previous quad that I, I really like. It's simple, it's easy, and it's compatible with others. Um, so, um, yeah, and it's cheap as well. So, and it's tiny. So, it, all, all of those things I do like about it. Um, a little outdated, of course, but I think it's still, you know, serves its purpose. It does what I need it to do. So, I'll wire this up now. So that out of the way. Um, the way that I will be wiring this up will be, or actually mounting it, is at the front here. So between the camera and the flight stack, I'll be mounting it on the bottom of this um, frame right here. Um, and the antennas, I am thinking of wiring it to the sides out this side here, um, coming out here and on this side here. So you'll see that later. For now, I'll um, get some of the wires onto here, soldered on, so the signal power and the ground. So I'll, um, these are already pre-tinned and I'll twist this up again, make it neat. Um, so on the Radio Master you'll see here, it does have these three pads, so it has a minus for ground and a plus for 5 volt power or power, sorry, I don't know how much, um, what the rating of this receiver is, but we will be wiring up 5 volts to it. And then S for signal, so I will do it that now. Alright, so we now have the, the pads tinned on the receiver, so let's wire it up. So the first one is the negative ground. All 
right, so I'll check that. All right, that looks much better now. So we do have the wire soldered up to the receiver. And of course, we'll put the heat shrink on to protect it all. Keep everything in place. So I'll just slip it over the antennas. that and I'll get a, a lighter and give it a bit of heat all right there we go <clears throat> the receiver is now ready to go onto the frame so as I mentioned before, I want to mount it kind of like like this here, just underneath, like that. So I might get some double-sided tape now and mount it there. Might be a bit hard to get to the bind button, but um, might have to live with that. Or oh, the other way I could probably do it is mount it upside down. And I can get to the bind button underneath. How about that? I'll give that a go. Alright. I'll get some double sided tape. Lucky I already have some ready from the last time. Only I'll only need a little bit of it. So let's get this on. I'll place that right here on the carbon. Seems it won't stick on the carbon. What I might try is this. I do have alcohol swabs. It does it clean some of the oils off? I don't know if this will work, but I'll give it a try. to clean that off a bit just give it a blow get that alcohol off and now it's sticking much better now there you go <clears throat> alright so like I was trying before I'll get it to mount like this but also showing the bind button so the bind button is there, I can mount it that way, I'll move it up a bit. It's a bit hard. I will put a zip tie around this as well to hold it in much more securely than just the double sided tape. Try that again. Get that bind button showing. There we go. I should be able to access that pretty easily. Right there. Okay, so that's how the receiver is going to be sitting. And I'll get this wired up. So, going back to the diagram, um, while I try and sort this out, we do have the S-Bus, um, is the third one down on the outside, if we look at it this way, it is this third one down from the, on the outside, and the power I'll be using from, I think I'll use the inside ones here, um, so 5 volt here and the ground here, I'll reserve these ones out here for the camera. Um, out the front. So let's get this wired up. We'll be coming over it this way here. I'll give it a bit of slack. We do have a lot of room up the top here in front of the flight controller for the wires to hang. So I will trim it off from here, giving it quite a bit of 
Slack. Right. <clears throat> so I'll trim these. Now that they are tinned, turn it around this way so I can get soldering. So always double checking where I should be soldering. I'll get the signal wire in first for SBUS. So I'll get the yellow and it is, and again I'll check the uh, diagram. It's the third one down on the outside and it should be this one here. Actually, I want the wire to come around to the side this way. So I might hold it around this way. Hopefully you guys can still see that. Okay. Signal is in. Actually, um, I might get this these three to be in the same line since that is the S bus and there's the power and the ground. So I will get this one in next to it on the outside. go and the last one is the ground just checking that again on the diagram it is the ground and the bottom here oops it slipped and do it this way. All right, there we go. The receiver is in now, and I will let it go through over this way. It isn't touching any of the gyros, so that should be okay. All right. Okay, so now that we do have another component in, again, I will be testing this. Let's uh, give that a go now. So bring out the short save. Plug it in, get the battery plugged in, and hopefully everything's wired up nicely. Let's triple check that. We do have S bus wired up to the third one from the top. On the outside, 5 volt is just underneath that, and then the ground is here next to the buzzer. So, all right, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so we do have that up and running and there's no indicator lights for the receiver I can't remember if this actually only lights up when there is um, something bound to it so I will try again I think it does flash when you first start it up so I'll check underneath no, I don't see any lights flashing but We'll check later when we try to bind it and see if it does flash up. So at the moment, no smoke, which is good. All right. So I will mount the antennas, like I mentioned earlier. I will mount them sticking out like this. Now the apex frame actually has these holes on either side of this plate and I don't know what they are for but 
It looks like a good place for zip ties to go in to hold the antenna. So I'll do that now, just to show you. The way that I want it to go is like this. So I'll get it in. And tighten it up. I was thinking that the antennas might go like that out here and one on this side as well. It's not exactly 90 degrees to each other, but I think it should be okay. I'm not going to be flying this thing so far away that I'll lose all reception. So hopefully the RSSI signal strength is strong, strong enough to fly around. All right, so there. Get them to point down a bit, like so. And I'll get them routed around and also heat shrunk on top of it. So let's give that a go now. I don't want it sticking out too much either, so I'm only going to expose a little bit of it. And the only effective part of the antenna is this exposed part here that's not shielded. So we only need it to stick out that much. Alright, so I'm just going to trim the cable tie here. and get some heat shrink. Let's see if I've got another one that's more appropriate size. Yep, I think I do. This is too big. All right, <clears throat> so we'll be going on like that. Let's just work out how long it needs to be. All right. Hopefully that's okay. I'll hold it in. Whoops. Hold it in while I shrink it down. Okay, so there's that. And if this doesn't work well, I might reroute them somewhere at the back or off the arms or something but this looks okay so far so I'll route this one over here and give it about the same length so just about that just about there so you can see that there, get the heat shrink, over and on top, we'll get it to size first actually. OK, 
Perfect. Okay, so that's where the antennas are going to go. Get these down, I'll probably cable tie them down as well later. In fact, I might do that now. So we go from this side and what I want to do is avoid having the cable tie covering up that bind button. So all right, so the bind button is still accessible. Great. And yeah, it should be quite secure in there now. One more click. There you go. And trim off the cable tie. There you go. So receiver is now in, wired up, antennas are in. This is a little bit loose. I might try and tighten that up a bit later, but you get the idea. This one's a bit better. All right. So. Um, the next thing I wanted to do, and unfortunately I forgot to do this earlier, was to get this antenna in. So this doesn't come with the Apex frame. Um, this came with the clone of the Apex frame. So I do have the clone with me as well. Um, I might do a video on the comparison of the carbon uh, and the frame altogether to see how different it is from the clone to the original. And this is the original one. Um, so how I'm going to mount this is on the back here. I have printed out this 3D mount that sits underneath it, which is a spacer that just keeps this sitting on top of it like this. So it goes on like that and onto the uh, stack screws. Oh, no, sorry, not the stack screws, uh, the frame uh, standoffs. So let's get that in. Um, let's get the standoffs in. So. All right, so you can see that I've got the standoffs in now. Um, and what I'll need to do is to route this cable through and underneath and around the capacitor, which might be v a little bit difficult because I intended on doing this earlier, so I don't have to maneuver around these wires, but I've already unfortunately wired it all in. Hopefully it's not too hard. Let's see how we go. All right, I was able to get it through, um, which is good. Now I'll need to get this on first, I think. I'll get that on. So as you can see, it sits on the back like this. And then this goes on top. There you go. So once that's in, we can go over here and plug it in. There you go, so the antenna is now mounted. We've got the receiver, transmitter, flight stack, antennas here, which is nice. And the only last thing is the camera. So we do have the camera here. I'll need to extend these um, because they're not long enough, I don't think. <clears throat> and you're probably wondering, why do I have this, this micro or nano camera, um, which is a run cam, Nano 2. Uh, I harvested this one from a Tiny Hawk 2 um, since the ESCs were busted on that and I can't be bothered to fix it. So I decided to use the camera on this one um, and the wires will not reach. So I'll have to wire this up um, and extend it. So let's give that a go now. I do have three wires here 
actually I should use I'll use these ones here they're good connections there and I've got enough wire here to wire it up okay so the camera is gonna sit in front here so hopefully that's enough wire um, so the power I could have had the same the right amount here but it's okay I'll just use the extra amount or use it all um, so I'll trim the ends off expose some of the wire and tin them so I can solder them onto the flight controller all right they're a tad long I'll probably trim it off just a little bit okay so all right so we know that the just looking at the diagram again we do have the power here 5 volts and also the ground so let's go and do them and that should be okay yep so 5 volt right there and also the ground just below it There we go. And then the video in is down the bottom here, as I mentioned earlier, and I had it wrong. The video in comes from the camera, not from the video transmitter. Let's get that on. And there we go. All right, so that's on. Camera's in. And why? Camera's wired up, I should say, not in. I'll get the wires out this way. Like that. Twist it up a bit more. Just to clean it up. All right, so that's how it's going to sit. I might clean up the wires a bit more later, but for now I will test out the, the, uh, um, power so just to make sure that I haven't shorted anything with the camera installed I'll leave it off to the side here I don't want it touching any carbon because carbon is conductive and it can cause a bit of a problem with some of the circuitry so getting the VFI short saver back in in standby mode and hopefully it powers up without any issues just double checking again we do have 5 volt ground wired up correctly and also the video in from the camera so let's give that a go three two one all right so there we go everything wired up now it's all good no smoke all right so um, just full disclosure, um, I've already put this quadcopter all together 
after putting the uh, soldering the camera on and um, yeah so I put the camera into the frame put the top plate on and everything on and also uh, taken it out to fly a few times um, and uh, yeah I've bashed it around the park uh, and around the yard as well and it's held up pretty well so you can see down here I've uh, replaced some of the uh, guards here the front the back and also the um, little plates underneath the frame as well the arms I haven't replaced these yet because I haven't had time but you can see that uh, there's a few scratches here that's uh, the damaged parts um, I didn't replace it because they were too damaged I don't mind that it's just that I wanted it to be in this nice blue color just to fit with the theme um, so I think it looks quite nice um, and uh, yeah so I'll uh, get on with showing you how I put it all together uh, with the top plate and everything as well and that will be the end of the uh, build um, so let's get on to it um, so to get the camera in we've got these plates here and it has the uh, camera mount holes on the side of them so to mount this camera here it has the two holes on either side and so we will need to put it in so I do have these TPU printed spaces and in the micro apex kit that comes with the frame it does have these um, hex nuts here that actually fit quite well so it's the right length they do supply with a different assortment of lengths and I've chosen the right one for this one so I will have to feed them through like this I think if it goes like upside down this way actually it goes in like that and I use the top one here so I put that in there I put on the spacer and then with the camera the right way around which is this way here I basically just screw it onto the side all right so we have one side on we'll get the other one on as well the plate it will need to go this way with the single notch on the bottom of the frame the two notches are on the top I'll put that in there get the spacer in as well like that and we'll get it onto the side of the other side of the camera okay so just finger tight for now while I adjust everything and then we can tighten them afterwards so I might tighten them a bit now because once they are onto the frame, the motors get in the way of the actual screws, the hex drive, so I'll just tighten them a bit. And I'll squeeze onto those spaces. So let's get it on. And it will fit into those notches. And there you go. It's quite easy. It fits quite well. I think this is a bit recessed, so I might try and move it out a bit. As I mentioned, see the motor gets in the way. But it can go in on an angle slightly just to loosen it. And I can try and move this camera forward a bit. Not too much. I think that is about enough. And I think that's about the right angle of about 25 degrees. So tighten that up a bit. Tighten that up there and it is in firm not too tight I don't want to damage the camera so that's enough for now all right so now that the camera is in let's uh, get the top plate on so I've got the top plate here and it does go on basically like this before I do that I do like to have um, just a uh, packing tape and I'll explain why in a second. So I'll just put on the packing tape and then I'll explain why I like to do this. I like it on the uh, back part of it. I don't think anyone else, uh, any other builds that I've seen online have done this. But I will do it just to show you. So just that section there and I will trim it off with the blade in a second. And you'll see why all right so I'll just trim that off there we'll 
scratch a bit of the uh, carbon, but that's okay. Be on the inside anyway. All right. Peeling that all off leaves just that. So you'll see that there's just a thin film of tape there and it will be film on the underside so I will be putting it on like this and I'll get it into the camera bracket notches it's a little bit tight I think I tighten it a bit too much I'll loosen that try and tighten them a bit later there you go so it fill in and there you go so this is how the top plate goes on top of course and I will be putting on this 3d printed um, HD camera mount so I do have a uh, Cadex Orca here and I like to sit it on the front like this it is very heavy for this quadcopter but it allows for a bit of high def um, 4k video uh, at cruising speeds and uh, minimal obviously acrobatics flips rolls and dives and um, power loops but gives you some nice videos with a small quadcopter like this so I'll explain now why I do have that plate in there the way I like to mount my batteries I found this out recently is I like to use these so these are command 3m um, kind of the stiff velcro that's used for walls and putting on uh, picture frames and what's good about these is that they are quite sturdy uh, they're very strong I'll peel one out now and I put it on to the frame here with that velcro and I also put it onto the batteries as well so I'll grab a battery here so I do have that same velcro on the battery and it clicks in quite strong so you'll hear it click in there you go and peeling it out quite easy and it's reusable over and over it doesn't have the fluff and everything of the other velcro that's like these ones here and it works quite well so I do like to have this I haven't had any real issues with that using this but um yeah so I'll put this onto the frame like on, on top like this and why I have that masking tape underneath is because when the props actually cut up grass um, and debris it goes underneath the frame and then you get all the dirt and grass that is stuck underneath on the bottom side of this um, of this velcro sticky tape thing here so I don't like that I'll, I'll put it up here and uh, I don't like it sticking underneath so that's why I'm gonna put this on top um, and that's why I have the masking tape underneath so let's give that a go. Actually, I will put this one on first because it does need to go on. So I know how how much of that tape I need, the Velcro tape. So let's just get that in. So four of the hex screws on the front. Alright, so now that I have the camera mount on top, the HD camera mount, I will put this in. So, we'll stick it in like this and we won't need this little tab that is uh, meant to make it easier to pull off the wall without damaging the paint. But I don't need that, so I will cut it off. Alright, and peeling this back. We can put it on here as well so all right there you go so pressing it down quite firm all right so there is a bit of uh, the uh, clear tape that's exposed up here and if there's grass and stuff that's okay I can pick it out but when the grass is underneath inside the frame it's a bit hard to get out so I don't like that there you go so just to demonstrate the battery going on top of it we can if I put it this way without having the camera on top of the front if I'm flying without it 
for freestyle I can just click it in and it holds quite well so that's right in the middle there and I can look it still holds quite well I'm pulling it off there you go so it is quite handy and um, yeah it allows you to connect the battery and obviously put onto the frame a battery strap so I've got one here I can feed that through all right so plug put this through here I'll get the XD30 on the other side over there and because the battery is already in there held quite firmly that can go on top and that battery I've had crashes before that are quite hard and all I've seen is the battery just shifts slightly about half a centimeter to the side um, but doesn't get ejected off the frame or anything like that so um, I hope it doesn't happen but um, yeah for now I think this is working quite well for me and the length of it allows me to put the camera on as well so just to demonstrate that I can peel that off I can move it back here or if the, the battery leads get in the way I can mount the battery backwards that way and the camera on the front like this and there's plenty of room there as well but also I can adjust the um, center of mass so there you go I can turn this to the side so you can see and there you go so I'll turn it this way so you can see a bit easier as well there you go so for the battery strap though I guess you're probably wondering how would I put that there is a gap that's just above the video transmitter I'll get that in and there you go and the battery lead can go that way it can go underneath here as well but yeah so um, I guess the last thing that you might want to see is the propellers so I've got here these are I'll take this camera off just to make it easier and the battery I've got the wind dancer 3028 and I've had flown these and they are quite uh, efficient so they're not as aggressive as the next ones that I'll show you which are these here which is the gem fan 3052 flash so these are the gem fan wind dancers these are the flash uh, and you can see that the pitch is um, uh, 52 so it has a much higher pitch than these ones here so it does have a much more aggressive um, uh, characteristic to the flight and uh, it does get the motors a little bit warmer than these ones so it's not as efficient um, but they do provide a lot of good performance if you're you're gonna fly yeah if you're gonna just if you're gonna th throw it around um, do a lot of um, acrobatics loops and um, sharp turns this will be this is great um, there's another thing that you need to keep in mind with these ones here is that it does need a longer and I've got the longer ones here because of the pitch because of the pitch is so high it does need a taller hub and I think the hub is 6 mil not 5 mil so just give me a sec while I confirm that for you there you go it is 6.11 millimeters 6 mil and because of that um, the uh, Zing motors that uh, come with a uh, very short um, uh, propeller screws. So I think they come with five mil, so or five point five, or even just six mil. So it barely can reach the actual motor. So I've had to buy these ones here, which are a little bit longer. So they are, if you are curious, these are seven point fives. There you go. So these do quite well um, and but for now I think I actually now I will put now actually I'll put up these ones on here these clear ones they look nicer and I'll put them on all 
Right. So now that we have the adapters in, they always give a spare, which is great. I will feed the screw in. And it is a little bit tight, so just have to feed it through. Okay, so it does pop out there and it looks like it's about two mils. And just looking at the motors here, they do have some tolerance and gap enough for two mils so that the screws don't actually touch the motor windings. So that should be good. It shouldn't have be any issues. So I'll go ahead and put them all in now. Before I do, I'd like to check that I do have them the right way around. I will be flying these with the propellers rotating outwards, not inwards. And I'll explain that in a second. All right, so I like to fly with the uh, propellers rotating this way, which is outwards, which means it's out from the camera. But the problem is, is that it does shoot in any debris of grass and uh, dirt into the stack, but it does keep the motors, uh, keep the uh, dirt out of the camera. The other reason is if I'm flying towards something, which generally you're flying towards uh, things, if you do catch some of those branches or leaves, it doesn't pull the quadcopter into the object, but rather it pushes it away from the object. So if it hits it, it's going to fling the object away and the quadcopter will fly away from it. So I find that it's better when I fly like that, if I'm close to branches. So um, yeah, it's just my style. You you know, if anyone out there likes to fly with props in, uh, then that's fine as well. So props out, I'd have to put this one this way so that it uh, rotates that way and pushes air down. And I'll get the rest of the propellers on now. All right, so there you go. The uh, propellers are now in and um, the whole quadcopter is now finished. Um, so that's it for the build. Um, I hope that's everything and it seems to be good so far. I will uh, be bashing this around as I have done so already. And uh, yeah, it's been great. Um, I think the, uh, the motors, although they are 1404s, um, they do hold up quite well. They do give it a quite a bit of punch. Um, enough punch for me anyway and uh, I do enjoy flying this around the yard and, and it's small enough so that it's not so I guess <laughs> aggressive um, and doesn't scare you know little children and dogs and the elderly around parks and everything so um, there you go that's uh, my micro apex three inch build it's been great I do enjoy it and I will be looking forward to flying this many more times i will post up um how to configure the flight controller and everything on this as well and um, some of the tuning that i do um and some sample flight videos i will show as well so i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something um and got to see the micro apex uh, three inch being built and what um can be put inside it and what things you have to overcome so i hope you like it um any questions you have put into the descriptions i'll put um links to the items as well uh into the uh, the description sorry i i meant put the um questions down in the comments below um but yeah i'll put the links into the description as well um so you can find them online for all of these parts and uh yeah i hope you enjoy it and yeah happy flying cheers